Hello, welcome to this video. This video will be on Firewall D and how to use and configure it. So let's begin. Firewall D is compromised or, or made up of uh, two different types of things. First there's Firewall D, the service. We'll go over that in a minute. And then there's Firewall D that manipulates the firewall to create different uh, policies, open ports, closed ports, open different services. And Firewall D does this as a front end for IP tables. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll start with is the actual service for Firewall D. And so you can look up the service or the Damien as some Unix, Linux uh, uh, communities refer to it, or most of them anyway. Um, We'll look it up through uh, the command here, sudo. You have to use uh, sudo because it requires uh, root rights to look at services. So you do a sudo and then you do, let's see, we'll do sys, sorry, system, ctl, space, and then status, space, and then it's firewall D. Press enter, it'll ask for my password. Oh, that's right, I'm already logged in. Okay, so, and then as you can see, this is the name, Firewall D Service, but you don't have to use the full name, you can just use this part. As you can see, it's loaded and it's enabled. That just means that when you reboot your, your server, uh, it's gonna go ahead and reboot it and bring it back up and, and start it up okay and as you can see it's active and it's running okay so that's how you look at the service for firewall D we'll go ahead and clear that and that's uh, controlled through the system D uh, uh, initial initialization uh, package or software system B comes as default with uh, CentOS 7 and so there are other things you can do with the services for firewall D if you want and we'll hit the up uh, arrow you can look at the status you can also manipulate it you can start you can start the firewall D service as well as you can enable the firewall service and as we said earlier, enabling it allows you to go ahead and make it to the point where it'll be installed in the startup script so that it will, it will boot up and start every time you reboot your server. Okay. You can also stop the firewall service as well as disable the firewall service. You can also reload the firewall service <coughs> excuse me so you can use all these commands to manipulate your firewall all right and that's a quick look at the firewall service through firewall D all right the other thing you want we want to look at is how to manipulate the firewall through firewall D so let's clear the screen and then what Firewall D does is it it uh, it allows you to manipulate the IP tables for for uh, CentOS 7 um, through what are known as zones, zones, and zones and services can be uh, uh, attached to fire to your um, to your firewall through your interface. Uh, services like uh, web services, SSH. Today we're going to go over how to attach a service through uh, your interface for SSH. So let's go ahead and run the command. It's going to start with sudo firewall dash cmd space and then you want to do attack tag get and then another tag and then we can look at the zones okay and then press enter now these are a list of the zones that come default you got the block zone dfm zone 
drop zone, and etc. The default zone that you have when you first uh, when you first open up and you're using uh, Firewall D will be public. It's automatically set for the public zone. Now I have went ahead and changed mine from public to drop. Okay, and we'll go over that in just a few moments. But the next command I'd like to run is sudo. Oh, and also just looking at the zones and looking at different services, you don't need the um, you don't need the root rights to do that. We can run the same command. We'll hit the up arrow without sudo because all we're doing is looking at the the information. Okay, that's the same thing for this next command. And that's just firewall cmd space get get and then you want to do a get default zone and this will show you the uh, default zone for my interface press enter okay and as you can see my zone is drop but now if we go ahead and we run the same command oh well you can run the same command with sudo as well and it'll still bring out the same thing and then the next command again we don't need sudo for this one and in this one you want to look up active space zone okay in our zones sorry and then press enter okay and as you can see I'm still my zone is still set to drop and this is this is attached to the interface ENP 0 s3 okay and so now we see what zone I have and we see what interfaces are connected to that zone so the other thing we're going to look at is we're going to look and see what services that are attached per zone and interface. And that's just firewall. Most, if not all, commands that we do with firewall D is going to begin with firewall dash CMD. And then tac tac. And then we can get a list of all default services that are that are that are that are on or that firewall D can use and that's just get space services and it'll show you a list of all the services that you can create or that you can use with firewall D so we just press enter and these are all the services some of them you may be familiar with some of them you may not be familiar with like NFS is one I'm familiar with uh, NFS 3 pop 3 and then we have the one for the web server http and https now the one that we'll be going over today that you can install on your interface is ssh okay now i already have it configured but we'll go over how to do that as well as change your um, your default zone as well so let's go ahead and clear the screen and now so the next thing we want to do is we want to look and see what attack uh, what services are already attached so we run the command firewall dash cmd space da, da, tac tac list tac and then uh, services with an s and then you press enter oh I apologize looks like you do need to have root rights for this so we just hit the up arrow go over type in sudo and press enter and we see that the uh, session the uh, service that we have attached to the to the zone and interface is SSH we're also going to go over what ports are uh, and how to attach the ports to your interface as well and so to look and see what ports we already have attached and I do have port 22 already attached but to look at that the command is just going to be sudo firewall cmd 
space tac tac l i s t space and then of course you guessed it ports and then press enter all right and as you can see we have port 22 attached so let's go ahead and clear the screen now i have a list of commands for manipulating the firewall we've already went over most of them okay but let's just go over some of the other commands on this list like for instance how to change your default zone okay so well first thing we could do is we could look at my default zone and see what services are attached to them in a longer format so let's go ahead and do that first We'll go ahead, copy, and paste that here, and then we'll press enter. And so, this gives you a list. This is my default zone. And these are the services and information that's attached to my zone. You can also see that it's, as well, it's attached to this interface. These are the services. This is the port and whatever protocols. All right, so we'll just go ahead and clear the screen here. And as I said, let's go ahead and look at how to uh, change my default zones, right? So, let's see here, change zones. So we'll go over this command after I put it in the command line. And we just copy and paste it. Now to copy and paste it from a text file, into your uh, into your uh, command line is very simple. Oops, hold on. So you just highlight the whole thing, right? Right click, copy. Then you come over to your uh, console here, your terminal, and then on your keyboard you press the Shift, Control, and Alt. Oh no, I'm sorry, Shift, Control and the letter V or the button V, V as in Victor, on your keyboard. And then that just pastes it right into the console or the terminal, whichever ter term you want to use. Anyway, let's go ahead and go over this uh, command right here. And I just wanted to extend the screen a little bit. So we just used the command sudo firewall dash cmd space tac tac zone equals drop because that's my current zone right dash dash change and whatever interface we want to attach it to equals and that's my interface name right there all right enp 0 s3 is my interface name now like we said earlier you can change it from the, the default zone which is public to drop to be uh, uh, DMZ to uh, drop or block or whatever what whatever zone you want to change it to you can go ahead and change it to alright and then you just press enter alright so we'll go ahead and get out of that because I've already changed mine to my to the zone that I wanted to and then from there you can go ahead and check your phone your zone all right, here's the command to do that. And again, we do a copy and we do a copy from the from the file. In this case, it's a text file. Left click and copy, and then on the console you press Control Shift and then V as in Victor at the same time. That brings it right there, puts it on the console for you. You press Enter. We might need uh, root rights. But let's see. No, we did not. So it shows that our default zone has now been switched to drop. All right, so now that we have that, let's go over how to put in the services and, uh, and attach them to our zone. So that's a very simple command. We'll just scroll down here. Let's see, default set zone, we already did that. Well, we'll go over that command again. Or maybe we didn't go over how to set the default zone. We'll go over that now. So, 
the command to set your default zone to drop is going to be firewall dash cmd space set default zone equals and then whatever the zone name that you want to set okay this is the way you go ahead and set your default uh, zone all right and so we get out of that we already checked the services we already listed services listed ports now we're gonna go ahead and add services okay there's actually two commands let's say if you just wanted to check and see if you can go ahead and uh, add the services that would be the command right there firewall tag cmd space and then tag tag zone equals drop tag tag add that uh, tag service equals ssh okay now once you go ahead and do that if you wanted to make it permanent you could run the same command but then you do a tag tag per and i can't spell permanent so let's just come down here per Manent. Okay, then you press enter and then that will permanently keep it on the um, um, That will permanently attach those services to your zone Now if you would go ahead and put it uh, type in this command without the permanent um, Switch right there if you would go ahead and run this whole command without that then when you restarted your firewall all of your services would be gone you would lose them all. So make sure if you want this to be permanent, oh, and there should be a, there should be a space between permanent and the next command, which is tac tac add. Okay, so that's the command you wanna run if you wanna attach your services permanently to this uh, zone, all right? And so let's go ahead and get out of that. Go ahead and clear the screen. And basically, the command should be the same for adding your ports. Okay? And you're just going to go ahead, copy it from here, go to your console, and then shift control V, as in Victor. That puts in your command. And then you just do sudo firewall cmd zone equals drop, and then permanent, and then add port equals 22 forward slash tcp you have to include the tcp you can't you can't use ssh if you use that then it'll come it'll come up as an error it has to be tcp or udp one or the other i normally just go ahead and choose tcp and it go and it works okay once you do that then you just go ahead and press enter in my case, I'm doing a control C because I've already done it. As we've seen, I've already attached both services for uh, SSH and for port 22 to my interface and to my zone. Anyway, that's how you would do that. And the reason why I do that is because without doing that, you won't be able to SSH into your uh, CentOS 7 uh, server. Okay, which is what we have here today if I hadn't mentioned it during the beginning of the video. This is for CentOS 7, 7.5 to be more exact. You need to do that. Those You need to uh, uh, create those services and the ports off of that zone and that interface so that you can be able to um, SSH into your system. Also, one other thing you might want to remember or know or be aware of is, is that if for some reason you still have problems trying to telnet or I'm sorry, SSH into your service, it might be because your SE um, Linux is activated. Okay. And to make sure or to, to check it out, let's just go ahead and clear the screen. You type in SE and then status. Sorry, ST status, and it is disabled. I went ahead and disabled mine just to be on the safe side. Um, if you're able to SSH and, and your uh, SE Linux is enabled, then go ahead and leave it enabled. However, 
if you find that your SS8 or your SE Linux is enabled and you're not able to SSH, I would suggest that you choose disabled. And the way you do that is, is that you, let's go ahead and change over. You'll need to go to the config file for uh, SE Linux and then you'll need to uh, change it. I'll show you. You just do a CD for change directory and it's in Etsy and let's see, uh, it's either in, uh, let's see, SE Linux. Yeah, there we go. And then you press enter. Now you're in the SE Linux folder. You wanna clear the screen, LEX. And then there it is right there is the config file. Oops, there it is right there. So what you wanna do is you wanna use whatever, um, you wanna use whatever text editor to use and just so you know this is a root owned file so let's do a ls and as you can see it's owned by root okay so you're gonna need to go in as root and to do that you just do a sudo su minus press enter put in your password put in your password for root Oops, I'm sorry, you need to put in your password for your username. So let's do that. Oh, not found. Hold on a second. And, okay, it didn't even require your password. Now you could have done it that way, um, or I believe you could have done a sudo space su. Okay. That minus or that tack uh, at the end, that just allows for you to use a special switch. Okay, but in either case, you want to log in as root, and then let's go to that command. Oh no, now you got to go back to uh, Etsy, and then let's see, SE Linux, clear the screen. All right, now you see you got that config file. So you want to use whatever uh, uh, editor you have. Some people like Nano. Me, however, I like either VI or VIM. And then config and then press enter. All right. Now, as you can see, you come down here and it's already there, highlighted in blue. All right. So what you want to do is you want to change it. If it is enabled, it'll show as enforcing. You either want to choose permissive or disabled. Okay. I went ahead and just disabled mine. Okay. Then once you do that, you go ahead and just save it. Okay. And you will need to do both rebooting you want to reboot your firewall and to reboot your firewall well first let me get out of uh, uh, root okay and then first you want to reboot your firewall sudo firewall cmd space I think just reload well hold on tag tag reload let's enter okay and also what you want to do is you want to reboot your system and you know you reboot it with the reboot command or you can do the sudo space shut down space minus r and then now and then you press enter and that will reboot your system or your server okay and then once you've done all of that then you should be able to ssh into your uh, CentOS system from any other place remotely. Okay, so that should be the end of this video. Thank you very much. I appreciate your patience. You have a good day.